What's going on, y'all? GT Jesse back with another Gran Turismo 7 livery editor video. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you really what is the best method for getting text decals uploaded to the Gran Turismo decal library. And before we do that, a couple of uh, just quick housekeeping items I want to touch on. Uh, one, if you enjoy the video, please do hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for more Gran Turismo 7 creative content in the future. And two, I actually just recently expanded to uh, creating an Instagram page. So if you want to follow me on there, my handle is just at gtjesse underscore. Um, I was just thinking the other day that there's a lot of people that you know, for one reason or another, their account gets shut down or shadow banned. Um, and it might be a good idea for me to have a couple of different platforms where I can reach my audience in case if there's ever a problem with my channel, I've got another way to get in touch with you. And so uh, this is just another platform where I'm going to be uploading creative content. And uh, it's again, Instagram at gtjesse underscore. I can also be found on TikTok. Um, I upload slightly different content on TikTok. Um, that is just at gt underscore jesse and um, on tiktok uh, i actually plan on doing some live streaming <clears throat> in the near future and so if you want to watch some of those live streams um, you can you can find me on tiktok to do so um, now back to it so today we're going to be talking about uploading text decals to the gran turismo decal library and i'm on the gran turismo 7 my page right now and uh, from the my page page if you flip over to the decal uploader, I actually created a whole video that walks you through how to create vector files, how to upload those files here, what all of the restrictions are, how you can ensure that you're basically meeting the restrictions and getting your decals uploaded successfully. But all that being said, I still get actually a lot of questions from people in the community about uploading text decals specifically. And so you might be wondering, like, why would you want to upload text decals specifically? Um, and there's a couple of different reasons, but I don't think I can actually click on these. So yeah, I can't like view them, but I can zoom in. Um, and so if you look at some of these, so this is just my, my handle here at GT Jesse. I uploaded that. That was a text decal. I uploaded the clean decal. The TC, you know, some of these TCR decals. And I basically created these, um, you know, for, for various purposes, um, you know, just for some of the liveries I wanted to create. But a lot of times you'll find that logos, like even this Jaguar logo here, it has text embedded in it. And so you might get a higher quality um, decal if you can break it up and upload the text separately from the image. And so that's kind of what I was testing out here. Uh, back in April, I was uploading just the Jaguar stencil, and this was for the metallic, you know, how to do metallic decals video that I uploaded, where you have to create that stencil effect. But either way, there's a lot of different reasons why you might want text to decals. Um, if you look back at like the historical Marlboro Formula One cars, the Marlboro logo, it's all it is is text. It's just just text. And so, really, if you can get that font then um, you don't need to go through the process of downloading an image, saving that image, cropping it, converting that cropped portion to a vector, and then crossing your fingers that that vector is under 15 kilobytes. That's a very difficult process for something that is very simple to do if you can just get your hands on that font. So I'm gonna show you how you can do that too. Um, another example here is the Jurassic Park logo. And so, you know, to create a really high quality logo like this or decal like this, um, maybe somebody went in and got the Jurassic Park logo and just converted that whole logo to a vector. But I would be willing to bet because again, we're dealing with 15 kilobyte file size limitations. This is multiple layers where the font is one, um, you know, the, the dinosaur is another, you know, and this was kind of created manually so that you know, so that it's in a high quality vector format. Um, today, what I'm going to be showing you is how you can create the uh, font from Little Caesars logo and upload that. So that's gonna be the example that we're working with today. And so first things first, you have to get the font. And so if you go into Inkscape and uh, you wanna click on, basically this is, uh, this is where you type in text and then up here is where you can select your font. So if you click up here, it's, it's gonna open this text and font window. 
So we'll click on that. And you can see all of the texts that are preloaded here. Um, they're all pretty basic. So let's just like, we're just gonna type in test real quick. You can see right here what it looks like right now. And then if you go through the list, you'll see that most of these are just really standard, you know, kind of like the fonts you would expect to see in Microsoft Word um, or, you know, Microsoft PowerPoint. It's just your default font pack. It's the fonts that come pre-installed on Windows computers. And so if you're on a Mac, it's going to look very similar. Um, you can see that I've already downloaded the Jurassic Park font, and I've actually already downloaded the Little Caesars font, but I'm going to take you through the process of how you can get those fonts yourself so that you're able to access them and you know do all this you know do all this on your own in the future and so uh, we're going to go on ahead and flip over to this website right here and it's just called 1001freefonts.com and you can see that there are you know all kinds of different fonts on this website and so we're going to go on ahead and download um, this marlboro font from dieter stefman so all you have to do is download the font it's gonna come in a zip file. And then when you open that zip file, you're going to have a window here. Um, and sometimes you'll have just the one font and other times you'll have the font with a readme and other things. But all you need to do is find the file type of true type font file. And when you double click that, it's going to open up basically your font pack with all of the different iterations of the font, caps, numbers, symbols, etc. And then you just have to click install. Once this installs, that font is now ready to use on your machine. So this font is just called Marlboro. And if we flip over to Inkscape, you're actually going to see that um, this font is not in my list here. And so if, if that happens to you, or even you can use this exact same process for Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, any other software on your computer that uses a font, it's going to follow the same process. So if you're not seeing it available here in your list, all you have to do is just go on ahead and restart whatever software you're using that has that font and we'll go on ahead and open Inkscape back up um, and you'll see that that font is now populating in our list. Here we go and we go over to our text and font menu and we should see Marlboro listed here now and there it is. So now we have that font and so let's go on ahead and jump into how we can create that Little, Seager, little Caesars logo <clears throat> excuse me and uh, we're gonna go on ahead over here to the create and edit text objects tool and that just brings up a little text um, you know cursor and we're gonna type in little Caesars there we go now what I usually like to do at this point is look at my document uh, you know see how my document my my canvas if you will it's this big like eight and a half by eleven um, canvas, I like to just resize this and snap it to the shape of the object that I'm working on. So I'm going to click Control Shift R and that just snaps the document size to the shape that I'm working on. Um, and now when I save this, instead of it being, let's go on ahead and just, um, can we undo that? We can. So, so real quick, if I were to save this as it is right now, this little Caesars icon is going to look really small when I open up this vector. It's going to look just like this. It's going to have this big, big canvas and then this little tiny icon on here. When you do Control Shift R, um, it, it snaps. So this is basically the file that you're saving now. So just, just a fun fact. So um, a lot of times I've actually been getting quite a few questions about people who, you know, they uploaded their decal to the decal library, but it shows up blank. And I can almost guarantee you a lot of the times when that happens, you're saving your, your decal, some, something like this, where the vector is off canvas somehow. And so to just ensure, you know, before you go in and save, um, ensure that that doesn't happen to you, just do Control Shift R, and it's going to snap the canvas to the shape of the object. So just, just so you know. Um, all right, so let's go on ahead and we're going to come over here to our font tool, right up at the top here. And then we'll come over to the side here and we'll find the, it's actually Caesar Little font. There we go, we can see a preview of it right here. We'll click apply, and there we go. And you can see that that increases the document size, so we'll just reshape it again. Um, and if we look at the Little Caesars logo, so a couple of different iterations here, but what I want is this iconic logo that you would expect to see on a box of Little Caesars pizza. 
So it is orange on the inside and then it just has this black outline. And so the orange on the inside is called the fill, the black outline is called the stroke. And so what we wanna do is um, we're gonna go on ahead and first we're going to take this text and we're going to convert it to an object. And so if we come up here to um, object and path, um, we're going to click on object to path and then if you want to further you can basically so this is now this is now one object um, but you could go in and you could actually ungroup it and that turns it into a bunch of little objects so you can work on the letters individually we're not going to do that um, that's that's not applicable to our use case today but we're going to go on ahead and select our object and then we want to go into the fill and stroke tool so i already have it opened here but in case if you don't have it opened, you can just come on over to the top here. And it's this little, it's like a, a paintbrush with a canvas on the back. That's your fill and stroke tool. And there's a lot of really cool settings in here. It looks like a really simple menu, but there's a lot of really cool settings. Um, it's, it's a bit washed out just because of this, this white theme for the software. But you have three tabs, fill, stroke paint, stroke style. Each of those tabs have slightly different subcategories and then you have blur and opacity. Um, opacity is kind of cool, you can do a lot with that. So if I like duplicate this object and then turn this one red, I now have two objects, one of them is red, the other one's gray. So, you know, just different ways that you can do different things with the fill and stroke tool. But uh, let's go on ahead and we're gonna go on ahead over to fill and we're gonna select flat color. And then I'm just going to use one of these presets and this probably isn't the exact right color. Um, I can almost guarantee it probably isn't, but that I think is pretty close. So if we, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of close. <laughs> um, it's a little off, but, but that's okay. Let's go on ahead, actually. Uh, we will just leave that as is. And now we want to get the black outline. Um, and the black outline is going to be the stroke. And so lots of different options here. And actually, you know, let's, let's talk a little bit about this fill and stroke tool because people have asked about gradients in the past as well. This is how you do gradients. It's using the fill and stroke tool. So flat color gives you just a flat whatever, you know, same color all around. You've got the radial gradient. Um, you have the center gradient, um, you know, mesh fill. I don't, I don't really mess around with these, but um, we're just going to use flat. And then if we go over to stroke, our stroke is also going to be flat. And by default, it's black, um, but uh, it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit thick, right? That stroke is a little bit thick. We maybe want uh, that black outline to be a little bit thinner. So I'll make sure we're selected here. We'll go over to stroke style. And then from here, we can just adjust to the width of the stroke specifically, all the way down to zero if we wanted to. I think that right there is probably as close to perfect as we're going to get without spending a ridiculous amount of time on this. Um, but let's go on ahead and now all we have to do is save this and we ought to be able to upload it. Um, it should be under the 15 kilobytes. So let's go on ahead and check. Okay, so looking at the file size, it looks like it is 14 kilobytes now. And so we're gonna go on ahead and flip back over to the Gran Turismo My page. There we go. And we'll just go on ahead and upload that decal, drag and drop. That's what it looks like. Looks perfect, honestly. We'll click on upload. And there it is. We've got it uploaded. And when I go into my Gran Turismo decal library, I'll be able to use that decal. I'll share it as well if anybody wants to make a little Caesar's livery. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it, guys. That's how you create high quality text decals and upload them to the Gran Turismo decal library. So um, if you found that video helpful, again, please do hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for more great Gran Turismo 7 creative content in the future.